good morning one and all today we will discuss the corresponding correlation topic correlation it's simply the process of measuring the similarities between the two signals it's a process of of measuring measuring the similarities similarities between the two signals that may be the two different signals or or the same signals if we perform the uh, this correlation process for two different signals it is been called as the cross correlation for the two different signals if we perform the correlation between the same signal and its shift and its shifted version it is being called as the auto correlation it's been called as the auto correlation now in the process of this particular auto correlation process let this particular cross correlation and auto correlation process will define both the signals in the form of energy signals as well as power signals that means it will be separately defined for for energy signals as well as for the power signals that means we'll define it first for the energy signals now later we'll define it for the power signals there is a separate expression for the power signals as well as for the energy signals let first we'll define the cross correlation cross correlation which is the measure of similarity measure of similarity between two different signals measure of similarity between the two different signals between the two different signals let that be as been the two different signals as x1 of t and x2 of t like that therefore the cross correlation between them will be represented as r12 of tau which is been equal to minus infinity to infinity x1 of t and x2 of t minus tau and integration with respect to tau when we call it is r12 first we should have the first signal next we should have the second signal and which is been equal to minus infinity to infinity it can also be given as as we have shifted the first second signal by the t minus tau we can have a choice of shifting the first signal to the t plus tau and in making the common region to the x to the second signal x2 of t dt this is also we called as the our r12 of tau only similarly this r12 of tau can also be can also be the can be uh, this r12 of tau will uh, r21 of tau can be given as from minus infinity to infinity another choice is minus infinity to infinity first the second signal next the particular x1 of t minus tau dt and minus infinity to infinity this is x2 of t plus tau and x2 of t x1 of t dt x1 of t dt now these are the signals which will be defined for energy signals energy signals as we have taken the integration from minus infinity to plus infinity okay and considering these signals as the real signals only real signals there is no complex nature in this particular signal they are the only the real signals this has energy signals for this definitions similarly for the power signals for the power signals it is been given as that's r12 of tau is equal to minus infinity to infinity x1 of t in case of here also minus infinity to infinity no therefore we should write like this minus t by 2 to t by 2 1 by t why because the power signals will almost all the periodic signals therefore it will be defined for a particular period of t and integration will be taken for a minus t by 2 to plus t by 
x1 of t, x2 of t minus tau dt. Remaining thing is same. Is same. That's only one difference is 1 by t minus t by 2 to, to t by 2. x1 of t plus tau and x2 of t dt. Similarly, the R21 of tau will be equal to 1 by t minus t by 2 to t by 2 x2 of t x1 of t minus tau dt which is equal to 1 by t minus t by 2 to t by 2 x1 of t plus tau and x2 of t dt like that as this was the cases of the power signals and all these functions will be defined only for the real signals if we define or if we want to define it for the complex signals for example if we take for x1 of t and x2 of t are x2 of t are complex signals then automatically these expressions will be changed that we should consider the complex nature of the these x1 of t and x2 of t in our these equations. How we consider that complex nature in, in specifically for the energy signals and the power signals is the first signal will be as this and the second signal will be taken its complex nature that by taking the complex conjugate of this particular signal. Complex conjugate means if for example the x2 of t is in the form of a plus jb a complex number then x2 star of t is a x2 star of t is nothing but a minus jb a minus jb like that the second signal will be in complex form that's always the second signal will be taken in the complex conjugate nature like this complex nature like this that's the process of that is the differentiation between the two two things that one is one classification as that when the x1 of t and x2 of t are the real signals then obviously there is a corresponding there is no complex nature in this particular formulas hence the same signals will be continuously used next in the cases when the x1 of t and x2 of t are the complex natures then we should use the com that complex nature in our formulas and it is been separately defined for the energy signals as well as for the power signals if it is defined for the energy signals like this with the integration from minus infinity to infinity and for the power signal the integration is from minus t by 2 to d by 2 by taking the 1 by t that means we'll take the average power of the corresponding uh, corresponding in case of the power signals okay this is the case these are the definitions or which are the formulas present in the cross correlation. This one is, will be the properties of cross correlation. Properties of cross correlation. In the properties of the cross correlation, first property as we have defined that first property as that's R21 star of minus tau will be equal to r12 of tau that's by using the complex nature that's r21 of star of minus tau is equal to r12 of tau let us consider that r21 of tau for i am considering it for the energy signals you can do it for the same as the for the power signals also that is r21 of tau is equal to minus infinity to infinity first x2 of t x1 star of t e minus tau dt that is the definition or the formula for the corresponding r21 of tau now what we want is r21 of minus tau that is minus infinity to infinity x2 of t x1 star of minus tau in place of here, here tau we have therefore we have taken as t minus tau here minus tau means in place of tau we should get the minus tau that's why it will become the plus tau dt okay then r21 of minus tau we have got it next one is r21 star of minus tau r21 star of minus tau which is equal to minus infinity to infinity x2 of t x2 of t 
then taking the complex conjugate of the entire one that is x2 of t x1 star of t minus t plus tau dt Mactonic is good. It's sent for the entire thing. We should take the complex conjugate. That's minus infinity to infinity. This star will be present at here. That is x2 star of t and x1 star of t plus tau whole star. That's nothing but x1 of t plus tau. That means when we take the complex conjugate two times, then it will be equal to the true fun original function. That is, if you take the a plus j b. Their complex conjugate is a minus j b. Again, they taking the complex conjugate, we'll get the a plus j b only. That's the original signal only. Okay, that's why here two times complex conjugate x one of t plus tau it will be present. When we rearrange this particular one minus infinity to infinity, first one has x one of t plus tau and the x two star of t, x two star of t dt, which is equal to r one two of tau. Which will be equal to R12 of tau. That is our right there hand side R12 of tau. That is the first property. Next, coming to the second property. The second property is if if the case of the if R12 of tau, if the second property is if R12 of tau is zero. If R12 of tau is zero, then Then the R one two of zero of zero of zero. If R one two of zero is zero, then then the two signals x one of t and x two of t are orthogonal. Then the two signals x one of t and x two of t are orthogonal. To prove this particular one, consider our R one two of tau. R one two of tau as minus infinity to infinity. That is first. We should get the first signal R one gamma R. For the R one, we should get the R x one of t. For R one two, the second signal R x two of t minus tau and dt. Therefore, perform the uh, corresponding. Put the tau is equal to zero. That's R one two of zero. That's When we put the in place of tau as zero dt, in place of tau we have kept it as zero. Therefore, x two star of t dt, and given that r one two of zero is zero, therefore minus infinity to infinity x one of t x two star of t minus t dt. This indicates that minus infinity to infinity x one of t. And x two star of t dt is equal to zero indicates that the two signals x one of t and x two of t are orthogonal, as it is the condition for the orthogonals orthogonality. As it this integral is the condition for the orthogonality, therefore the signals two signals are said to be said to be orthogonal signals. Orthogonal signals. That is the second property, and the third property is when we take the Fourier transform of R one two of tau, it's nothing but our x one of omega into x two star of omega, x one of omega and the x two star of omega, and these two are uh, uh, the Fourier transform of R one two of tau is nothing but x one of omega into x two star of omega. Therefore, generally the Fourier transform of R one two of tau will be given as it's from minus infinity to infinity R one two of tau. As it is in terms of tau, we'll consider the exponential in terms of tau e power minus j omega tau and the d tau. Substitute what is meant by that's R one two of tau. That's minus infinity to infinity. That is x one of t. X two star of t minus tau d t. Next one as e power minus j omega tau and d tau. Therefore, change the order of integration minus infinity to infinity x one of t, then minus infinity to infinity x two star of t minus tau e power minus j omega tau. Next. 
this is with respect to tau then integration with respect to t therefore as we have that t minus tau here the exponential should also be equal to the t minus tau therefore i am adding a e power j omega t here here add a e power minus j omega uh, t here therefore e power plus j omega t e power minus j omega t will be the one here for that need we have been adding like that minus infinity to infinity x1 of t here e power minus j omega t next minus infinity to infinity x2 star of t minus tau when we combine these two exponentials e power j omega of t minus tau d tau and lastly the dt and take the complex conjugate for this particular entire one that's nothing but taking the complex conjugate for the entire integration here we have a we have a complex conjugate therefore take this complex conjugate to the entire integration therefore minus infinity to infinity x2 of t minus tau e power minus here plus j omega now minus j omega t minus tau dt e tau whole complex conjugate then dt like that then minus infinity to infinity x1 of t e power minus j omega t this particular entire thing will be nothing but our as it is the t minus tau here here also t minus tau it's a basic definition of our fun our forward transform that's why it is being called as our x2 of omega as for the entire integration we have a complex conjugate we'll get the x2 star of omega dt again this integration is also a forward transform which is nothing but our x1 of omega and x2 the second one is x2 star of omega hence we have got it as a we have taken that the forward transform of r12 of tau which is equal to x1 of omega and x2 star of omega these are the three properties of the cross correlation function thank you